Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys how in DaVinci Resolve 16 we can replace the background of a sky shot and change it to something dramatic or fantastical, such as this meteor shower that I've added in as the background to this other completely unrelated clip. So in order to do this, you're going to need two video clips. Your original shot that you want to replace the skyline with, and the sky shot that you want to actually fill in the background. If you don't have your own, I'd recommend trying a site like video.pexels.com or Pixabay if you are looking for free clips of skies that you could use to replace. So let's go ahead and start by creating a new timeline. So I'm going up to File, New, and New Timeline, and we are going to call this Tutorial Timeline. And for this effect, I'm going to grab in the same two clips that I was using in that preview you saw. So we have this shot of a guy who's just kind of sitting looking over the city, and I'm putting this on video track two. So this is our main shot, and the idea is we want to filter out this background and then put in another shot behind it, so wherever the background is filtered out, that is going to be where the new shot comes in and replaces it. So then I have this other clip from Pexels Videos, and I'm going to drop that into the video track one. So whenever I hide video track one, you'll be able to see that meteor shower in the background. But you can see that the video frame sizing of the meteor shower clip isn't the same. So I'm actually going to need to scale that up and adjust its position. So I'm going to make it something like zoom 1.4 and uh, I'll move it upwards as well. So that when we filter out the sky, it can cover the full shot. I don't need to worry about the little bit at the bottom here. Uh, because that's all being covered up by the city line anyway. So next we need to go over to the color tab with our video track 2 clip selected. And we're going to need to start selecting part of it to filter out. So on the color tab we have a little window over here on the right called nodes. We're going to need to create an alpha output so that we can control what the final video alpha is going to look like based on what part of the screen we're looking at. So I'm going to add that by doing right click add alpha output and then I'm going to drag the blue rectangle over to that new blue circle to create the alpha output. Now with this little eyedropper tool which you can find in the qualifier tab at the bottom make sure that uh, you have the picker selected by default. We can select part of the screen to filter out. So I want to select the color that we want to filter out and basically remove from the shot so that the background can come in. And I'm going to think that's somewhere around this uh, orangey purple in the center there. So when we do that, you may notice that that color and the colors very close to it are actually the only colors left in the shot. So we can invert that in the selection range of the qualifier by hitting this little invert button. And that'll give us more like what we want. So it's like opening a rift in the sky. And we just need to add to that until we get roughly what we're looking for. So to add more to the selection, change to the eyedropper tool with the plus sign still in the qualifier tab at the bottom. And uh, click around on your screen, trying to filter out more of your sky. Now obviously doing it this way is only really going to work if the sky looks considerably different from the majority of your shot. So if part of your video you want to keep isn't part of the background and accidentally gets filtered out by these color selections, uh, one thing you'll be able to do, and I'll show you in a minute, is to use a power window to mask over the section that you want to keep completely. But for now, just try to get as much of the background selected as possible. It doesn't need to be perfect. So just like how you can mask part of your video if you want to force it to be kept, you can also use power windows to force part of your uh, shot to be removed. So up here in the corner, you can see how it becomes a little bit harder to select. So we can keep selecting as long as there's no issues down here below. Let's just say that for right now that we couldn't select more of this purple uh, without accidentally selecting other parts of the video screen. What we can do is go over to the Power Windows tab and add a little window up here to filter that out. So I'm going to use the uh, Pin tool to draw kind of exactly the shape I want. and I'll just kind of left click and draw a shape of sorts around that area. Okay, and now I think we need to click this button over here to make it remove that part rather than removing everything outside of that part. Um, so doing that, you'll get a perfect removal of the corner. Okay, now we also need to remove more of this red. So I'm going to start making a couple clicks here till I get roughly what I'm looking for. 
So once again, if you have any small areas like down here where you get a little bit of straggling color, you can remove that again by using the pen tool. So just kind of drawing around the area. And uh, this will be really easy when there's no movement in the shot. So I can just kind of filter that out as well with that button there. So overall, it looks pretty good here, but there's still one little bit in here that's uh, still kind of showing uh, because it has a darker color that almost looks black. So if I start removing this, it's probably going to start uh, misshaping the edges of the guy here, but uh, we can work through that. So I'm just going to go all the way here and add in the color selections here. You can hit control Z if it gets a little too extreme. The idea is to try to remove as much of this color without affecting the uh, black or gray colors on the side. Uh, but pretty much regardless of how hard we try, we're going to get a little bit of fuzziness. So how we can kind of fill this back in is to go over to the tab 2 of matte thinness in the qualifier. So it's in this bottom right hand section over here. Uh, defaults to 1, but we want to go over to 2. So I'm going to be using grow and circle shape. And if we increase the radius, what you'll notice is that some of that color will get filled back in. So you can try to play around a bit with the radius and the iterations to have it regrow in part of the areas that were removed. You can also go back over to the first tab of matte thinness to help uh, reduce the edginess here a little bit. So we can kind of smooth out the edges here by adding in some denoise. And, and then to get rid of this color edge that's kind of showing around uh, these different sections, we can drag the clean black setting up a bit until those edges kind of disappear again. And then the final edge is kind of more uniform in its color. Um, also, you can try clean white if you're dealing with really bright colors instead of really dark ones here. And now we should play through the video clip to see if it looks good at all areas, um, that like the movement of the camera doesn't affect things too much. We can see that there's a little bit of an issue over there. So I'm actually gonna pause it there. And, uh, possibly expand this uh, little power window we set up. We could either do that or we could add to the qualifier one more time. We just have to keep an eye on this guy's movement to make sure that this doesn't cut any of it out because obviously we want him to keep his hand. So let's uh, finish playing through the rest of the clip. So there's this part where the hand goes up so we may want to adjust the window right there just a bit. Um, and I'll try adding to the qualifier to see if we can kind of filter this out a little better and see how that affects the rest of the clip. Okay, so I think in this case it actually worked out really well to just add a bit more selection range because those purple colors don't really show up anywhere else. So now if we go back over to my edit tab we can see that with a bit of a bigger window and see how it looks. So one more thing we can do if you want to make it a full silhouette with your original shot and then the background is the only thing that really has color is that we can lower the color curves on our base shot. So with the color curves, I can just take all of the color, which is this white line here, and drag it down as low as we want. So if we make it all the way at the bottom a flat line, you basically get pure black outlines of whatever shapes were in the original shot. So with this kind of night theme, that can look pretty cool. So that's basically all there is to doing a basic sky background replacement inside of DaVinci Resolve 16. I hope that when you try it out for yourself, you'll be able to get some pretty decent results. I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my future video content.